GM. Welcome to some more game analysis and the game I'm going to show you here I believe is a particularly interesting game. Um, it is a game I've played myself uh, over the last three tournaments. I've kind of started playing more chess again. Uh, but this game is probably the one I'm most proud of. Um, it was played in the qualification to the British Knockout Championships. My opponent was a young Indian player, clearly underrated. He ended up nearly winning the tournament, beating some some of the top players. Uh, clear, he's an IM, but he, you know he could even be Grandmaster Strength. And it was the first time I got a chance to try out the Leningrad Dutch. Thank you, Ruland. And um, let's have a look at the game. Uh, I think it, it worked absolutely perfectly. So my opponent played d4. And as I've stated in the past, for the last maybe 30 years of my life, I've generally played e6 and f5 against this, uh, you know, against this move to get into the Duchess. Because... After f5, which I played in this game, maybe I've only played this three or four times in my life, this move order, I'm now a lot more confident against all the white's sidelines here, bishop g5, knight c3. Um, again, thanks to our latest DVD, which I co-hosted with Grandmaster Ruland from Netherlands, who's the world's leading expert, I would say, on the Dutch and it's really helped me learn more about this opening so you know even if none of you guys buy a copy it's helped me so I'm happy <laughs> be nice to get a bit of cash um, so now White played a standard idea against uh, the Dutch he went for kingside Fianchetto in and this is considered positionally the best way for White to play because the bishop is very good cutting across the board I now play g6 for the first time ever, so it's quite an exciting moment for me um, playing playing this move here. And now we got castles, castles, and really one of the starting positions for the Leningrad Dutch. Now, having a basic understanding of the classical Dutch is very, very useful for the Leningrad Dutch. There are pros and there are cons. The pros are this bishop is fantastic. It can help support d5, pressurize, sorry, e5, and pressurize d4. On the downside, it's a little bit harder to get the queen over to h5. That's one potential downside. And it's, you know, just a very similar structure, though. Now, here, my opponent played b3. And this is, I wouldn't say the most critical line. The most critical lines arise after e, c4. But b3 is a very popular way for white to play against the Leningrad against the classical, against the stone wall, against any Dutch. So it's certainly something you were encounter. And here I just followed uh, um, the DVD that we've just made, the Leningrad Dutch DVD. I went D6. You don't need to play E6 in the Leningrad necessarily, which you do in the classical, because you're trying to play E5 in one move. Bishop B2, and now an idea borrowed from the classical Dutch knight to e4 and i even used a similar idea in the classical dutch to defeat um boris gelfand who at the time had just come for his world championship final uh, uh, which he lost to anand and the idea of this again you can see this bishop is released pressurizing d4 and with ideas of playing e5 uh, my opponent now developed his last piece knight bd2 and this is a standard position and here I also developed a piece, knight c6, pressurizing d4, getting ready to play e5, and now knight to e1. And my opponent played this very quickly and confidently, and had I not watched the DVD, I may have been a little bit unsure of what to play here. And in the DVD, Roland gives two suggestions, knight g5, and the move which I played in this game, d5. And... It does look a little bit like a stone wall, but there's a lot of differences here. Um, for a start, there's, there's, there's some pressure against this, this pawn. My bishop is in a different square to the stone wall. I have ideas of playing f4 as well, and also the move I played in the game, e5. And this is actually quite a key position. Now, what we looked at with Roland was the key line was white playing this knight to f3. 
Now, why is this the key line? Because it controls e5, it controls d4, and the other knight eventually will want to come here and white will try to get control of e5. And Roland gives a very interesting variation here. He gives the variation starting with a5, a typical idea. And if white plays a4, he gives f4. And this leads to some very interesting attacking positions. In the game, my opponent played e3 very quickly here. Maybe a bit surprised by d5. And I'm now just going to take a clip, actually, from the DVD. Because the words, it's only 20 seconds long. The words that were, were said in that clip were going through my head in this game. So let's just go to that clip now and listen to the master of this, Roland in action. First of all, if white isn't is a bit careless and plays e3, then you can play e5 and you have no problems. Yeah. The only that the only problem with playing the move d5 is that the square e5 is a bit neglected and if we get a chance to play e5 ourselves then all problems are solved basically so there you go and and i remembered that so what did i play in this position e5 and, and it's amazing just how clockwork this game went you know it went perfectly with the preparation uh for for you know this dvd i mean he's a very strong player my opponent but look what happened to him he played knight d f3 i took on d4 and I remembered some of the typical ideas we talked about in the DVD, as I mentioned before, f4. And this opens my rook up. My bishop can come into the attack. Um, and already I, I prefer black here. The, the opening has gone certainly in my favor. Knight to e5, a good move played by my opponent. And now I came up with a very interesting idea. I played knight to g5. And... The idea of this is to actually try to play f3 and either win a piece or checkmate my opponent. So let's just say my opponent plays a, a meanless move, uh, let's say like a3, just to demonstrate my idea here. Well, first of all, I'd probably get rid of that knight. Might as well, because that's his only active piece. And then my idea with the knight here is to play f3. And let's say he plays bishop to h1. Uh -uh. Knight to h3 is checkmate. Wow. And if he plays a uh, knight takes f3, we can now see why it's quite good not having my f pawn. Bishop g4, uh, and with the pressure against f3, I I'm winning a piece, I'm winning the game. There's nothing he can do because the pin on the queen. So, uh, knight g5, I was, I was very happy here. My opponent played h4. I think he's got to kick that knight away, it's too strong. And here, I simply came back. Now, knight to h3 was interesting, but it's it's actually one of those moves which superficially might look good, but in actual fact, it's not very good. Um, for example, king h2, I can take, take and go knight f2. But after some queen move here, um, and I can even take this one and go knight g4, I thought he just goes king h1. And I didn't like this so much for me. I mean, I, maybe I'm equal in, in some position here, but I'm, I, I'm, going for a, I'm going for more than equality because the opening has gone perfectly. So after h4, I just came up with a very simple plan and that was knight to e4. The knight comes back to the square it's on, but I forced my opponent to play h4, which has weakened his king position. He's weakened the g3 square. This is one case where moving Harry is actually a mistake. Well, not a mistake, but it because he didn't have much choice, but it does weaken g3. So now I have ideas just to take on g3. And Again, this is my strategy here. I want to weaken my opponent's king side and checkmate him. This is why I love the Dutch so much. Uh, in, the, in the Leningrad Dutch, you get such interesting positions. I know this from the filming of the DVD. So my opponent developed knight 1d3. And now if I try to grab the pawn on g3 straight away, it's maybe not ideal. Let's say I take here because my opponent will take on f8 and... He's got pressure. If I take with the queen, he takes their check. My queen needs to defend that one. If I take with a bishop or something, then queen to f3. And all of a sudden, his pieces are, have found very good coordination. And this is not worth me winning a pawn for this. Uh, definitely not. So instead of doing this, well, okay, first of all, let's get rid of that knight. And here, just a very simple move, finishing my development. Because remember, in that last line, bishop takes d5 check was a move I watched out for. Let's keep it simple. Bishop to e6. 
and I, and I simply defend this pawn and now as I've got better development I'm probably threatening to win on g g3 at this moment so my opponent defended g3 with queen d3 and now my idea was bishop f5 again it looks like I've lost the tempo but the moves I'm playing are actually inducing weaknesses or actually gaining gaining a bit of time because now the threat is to move my knight because I've moved my opponent's queen to uh, a dubious square there. So I think his, his next move is pretty much forced. He has to play g4. This is a good move. He's playing good defensive chess so far. And now if I move my knight, he can take my bishop. If I try knight takes f2 with a double attack on the queen, he simply plays a move like queen f3, and I have two pieces on pre, and I don't have enough for the piece. So I need to move my bishop again, but like before, it looks like I've lost time, so it's quite an interesting little to and fro game this, but these two moves are moves that he hasn't wanted to play. He wants these pawns back on g3 and h2. These two pawn moves, as we're going to see later on, are the key weaknesses that allow me to launch a devastating attack. So I've basically sort of tempted my opponent to come on, or forced him to come on, which has overextended his defence. You know, a, a strategy in, in other uh, forms of, of, of fighting as well, uh, and military. And um, here, I thought now my opponent had to play the move f3. This was his last chance. And after such a move, um, one very interesting line was something with my knight. I mean, the thing is now, his bishop on g2 is very bad. And I might just be able to retreat my knight. But this was key, knight g3, rook here. And now if I play queen takes h4, he has knight takes g6, and th this is an annoying counter blow. So I thought in a position like this, actually, maybe I could just get my bishop out of that tactic by even retreating it to c8, when it's very hard for my opponent to stop me coming and winning his king side. Uh, he doesn't have enough counterplay here. He only has one good piece of the knight, and I can always eliminate that knight. So, um, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Ginger. <laughs> that was interesting. I disappeared. I fell off the wall. Just another brick in the wall. Do do. Um. So here, this was. I think still he should have gone for this because in the game, he played um now c4. Now you may be wondering, can he ever take on on e4? Well, well, I thought not, because I thought an idea such as this, he loses a key defender. And he, he wins a pawn temporarily, but now I thought just bishop d5, and you can see that key defender is gone. The queen moves, and I always have queen takes h4, and I'm threatening checkmate, and he has very he has no protection now for his king. No protection at all. So c4 was played, and now we entered into some tactics, and clearly this is a very key moment of the game. Uh, you know, the, 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 so far things have gone well. The opening's worked out very well, thanks to the DVD. Um, I've played natural moves, I've created some weaknesses, but it's getting very critical now. Real hard calculation is required at this stage, because you can throw away your advantage at any moment by not playing the critical line and it struck me that here should be there should be something very strong for me because he has these weaknesses i just needed to calculate correctly and i think i came to the right conclusion first of all my bishop exchanges itself off for that exchange knight that strong knight in some ways that could be quite risky because my king is weakened but that doesn't matter if i checkmate him first and now queen takes h4 so so far very natural uh, uh, way to continue. My opponent has to really take on d5. We saw what happened if he loses his, his only defender of the king. And after here, now we see my key idea. I have two pieces on pre, so I needed to see this uh, position advance. My key idea was pawn to f3. And this is a, this is a typical idea. I mean, being a Dutch defense player, or I, I should say Dutch attack player, this move come, is often the start of a winning attack. And I just had to calculate my opponent's options here in advance. Well, if he takes my bishop, queen takes g4, and it's going to be checkmate very, very shortly. So we can eliminate that one. If he plays queen takes e4 here, well, um, I believe... It's been a while since I played this game now. I believe I was going to take on... Is that right? Take on g4. Yes, that is correct. 
and um, if he tries to keep his bishop, another very important attacking motif that if you play the Dutch, you'll know more and more, rook f5. And this rook is coming to one of these two squares, and there's no way he can do, will be able to defend against checkmate when the rook uh, lands on, on one of those aggressive squares. It's an undefendable position for him, um, clearly. Um, <coughs> so that was another line I, I had to calculate. If he doesn't play, if he doesn't move his bishop, but let's say he plays a move like this, then I have pawn takes bishop, and my bishop is coming to the uh, f3 square which, for example, will be devastating in a number of lines. He can defend there in some other ways, but it, it, I still have a big initiative. So the last option is what happens if he goes bishop takes f3. And again, th this maybe looks okay because he's attacking two pieces, but I calculated in advance that, like before, there's some poetry with this game, the knight comes back to g5. I mean, this knight has been devastating when it came to g5 earlier, threatening f3. Then it came back to e4, attacking g3, and yet again it comes back to g5 now, attacking that bishop. And my opponent very quickly played bishop g2, because he has to move that bishop, and he must have forgot my next move. Can you see my next move? A crushing way to win this game, <coughs> or to win material. <coughs> and if I allow queen to g3, I could be worse here. Because of course, the queen's come off, I'm not going to checkmate him. Well, the winning idea here is rook to f3. And this move I play very quickly, seeing it in advance. I don't think there's any hope here for my opponent. Uh, let's have a look at his options. He can take with the bishop, the queen, or he can move his queen away. So if he plays bishop takes, now I have check. And wherever he moves his king, I have another check here. And minimum, I can win his queen. And of course, that's winning the game. Nice little tactic. If he moves his queen, let's say queen to d4, I can now come in with a check and I have three, potentially four pieces attacking, but he has to get rid of this knight because if he moves his king, I have this check again and knight e2 in some positions minimum. Queen takes g4 is another move that would win here. So he has to take the knight and when he takes the knight, I have rook takes here and in actual fact, there's no way he's going to stop my pieces now coming in. He's lost that key defender again. So the only option he had was to give up his queen. Queen takes f3. But now I also have bishop takes g4. And, and materialistically, he might be doing okay, but his king is still so weak. And I have to finish this off carefully, of course. I need to get rid of the defender of his king, first of all. And now I need another piece participating in the attack. And we see this rook swinger idea occur again with the rook trying to get over to h5 key key moment and here just a little bit of care needed my second piece enters to the attack his king is too weak and after bishop c3 i threaten the rook to come to h2 and here i just had to calculate the right way to finish it and after a couple of well timed checks he resigned after rook takes e1 because whichever way he captures, he's losing big material. King takes, queen c1 check, I pick up the bishop. And if bishop takes, I simply take this pawn and I get rid of his other pawn. And that is game over. So that, that is my first uh, game in the Leningrad Dutch. And I have to say, whoopee woo! Whoopee bloopy woo! I, I, I'm very happy with the way... Uh, the Leningrad Dutch went there and you know I, I know we made a DVD of this and, I, and of course I'm trying to tempt you into buying the DVD if you want a good aggressive opening but uh, I am a man of my word and I, I, I do have faith in our products I wouldn't be playing them these openings in such a serious tournament if I didn't have total belief in them and you can see here it won me a game it got me a great position against a very underrated Indian player who, who's clearly 100 points higher and, it, and with the black pieces so it worked uh, actually fantastically fantastically well so uh, thank you for watching please like and please subscribe to the video I'll leave a link below please if you want to support me and you also want to help your own chess, go and buy that Leningrad Dutch DVD. You can download it to your iPad, you can download it to your phone. It's only available as download now, but it's, it's one of our best DVDs. 
It has a very comprehensive PGN file, meaning you could it has a book really attached to it. Uh, you can play it in chess space, other things. It's really one of our best products. I do honestly believe that. It's helped me a lot. Um, and some reviews already that we've had in, uh, you can see here from Raphael and Guido. And it's been very, very good feedback from everyone who's purchased it. Pur purchased, that's the word, it's so far. Everyone's saying it's 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 a very good DVD and I, I totally agree with them. Two-parter, it's over um, 11 hours in total, but you know, watch it once, watch it twice, you'll have a great opening and you'll have an aggressive way to play against every move that white plays with d4 and knight f3. Okay, so thank you very much. And um, I'll, I'll try to keep some more videos coming along uh, as often as I can. Uh, I'm streaming a bit more at the moment as well. Um, so um, I've got a new series planned of, of DVDs, uh, not DVDs, of free YouTube videos, which I'll aim to start tomorrow. Uh, but I need to get a couple of Blitz ones out there as well, a bit of crazy Blitz. It's been a while since that occurred. So anyway, please like the video, please subscribe. I'll see you all soon. And just thanks for coming to my YouTube channel. Goodbye. Thank you.